Welcome to News From Within. I'm Tanya Kepler, and today I'll be speaking with Lea Tsemo, an Israeli human rights activist and attorney, and founder of the Public Committee Against Torture. Lea is one of a group of attorneys representing those detained from the Fle Freedom Flotilla convoy. She was able to meet with some of the detainees in prison in Beersheba this week and talk to them about their experiences aboard the ship and since their arrest. She's going to talk to us about her encounter. Um, yesterday we managed to visit, I think it was the first visit of lawyers in prison, in the newly built uh, Ela prison near Beersheba, where all the prisoners from all the ships are being held. We managed to visit, all of us, within an hour and a half, no more, that's all the time they gave us, about uh, 250, 260 prisoners who were spread all over the prison. We met the women, we met some of the men. Uh, we couldn't meet all of them because there are more than 620. Uh, it was very weird. And on, on one hand, it was very weird. On the other, other hand, it was quite encouraging because we saw all of a sudden a mixture that on a daily basis, it's really impossible. We saw, for instance, amongst the women, Muslim women dressed very traditionally together with American women with shorts as if they were going to the seashore with French women, with uh, Greek women, with Belgic women, and they're all together, they all live together, they all speak together, they have all sharing the same adventures. And they all call for one thing, which was free Gaza. Then we could see the men, uh, some of them, uh, again, Greek, Irish, British, Americans, Turkish, Pakistanian, many journalists amongst them. They were all, like the women, under uh, initial shock. The shock was the death of nine of the members, because nobody was expecting, in not, no given moment, that there will be such an aggressive attack on them. They all clearly state that they have never, never prepared any weapons they never prepared any violence. They didn't even think about violence uh, reaction to the soldiers. They knew very well that they, they would be stopped, but they believed that it would be a, a cultural dialogue. They thought there would be some negotiations. They thought they would be asked to get off the ship or to turn the ship to Ashdod. They thought they would be asked not to get closer to Gaza. That's what they were foreseeing, because they knew that they are unarmed and they thought these are the rules to deal in the mid-sea with unarmed people. All of a sudden, they were really surprised. The army did not talk to them at all. There was no conversation whatsoever. Whatsoever. Earlier by day, there was an announcement, if you want to, to, rela to relieve your goods, you can come to... Uh, Ashdod, leave the goods and we'll bring them to Gaza, which was, of course, out of question. But otherwise, at about 4 o'clock in the morning, they were surprisingly attacked. And now I'm giving you the, the memory of those people from the Marmara that I talked to. And they are eyewitnesses. And for me, I think they are very, very reliable. They say that they were sleeping uh, in the ship. All of a sudden, at about 4 o'clock in the morning, they realized only when they heard bombs, terrible bombs on the ship itself, they realized that they are surrounded by small boats of the uh, army, of the navy, that threw uh, voice grenades on the deck, and then they threw also uh, smoke grenades on the deck, and where everyone was totally um, unbalanced, mixed, disturbed. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to expect. And mind you, there were 50 women amongst them, and even one child. While they were all running around, not knowing what to do, all of a sudden, they saw from a helicopter some fighters coming down on them with ripes. 
the first thing all the army who went on the ship wanted was to take the cameras. They wanted to stop all the documentation, to take the cameras, to take the mobiles, to take the um, computers. That was the first thing they, want, they wanted to do. And uh, it was quite frightening. They came on them, so maybe people defended themselves, but no more than necessary for a self-defense. No more than necessary. They didn't have weapon. The, anything that was shown on television was not weapon. Nothing was weapon. They didn't prepare anything. And then they testified that they saw people coming down on the rope, shooting at them without warning. Shooting in order to kill, and they managed to kill. They managed to kill nine people. Among the, the witnesses who told me what they saw, they saw five older people dead. They saw the bodies. One of the bodies was with a bullet in between the eyes. It was unbearable. There were many wounded people on this ship. Uh, they themselves, they had some crew, some medical crew, but the medical crew was on the other side taking care of other wounded people, and the, the dying persons they saw were just there, lying down, and they died within five, six minutes. And then they were forced to come to, uh, to the port in Israel. The first thing that was done was to de deprive them of any private property. The, all their belongings, from a toothbrush, to the passport, to the cameras, to the most important things, and I'm talking of, of a great amount of, of uh, journalists who were there, everything was taken away from them. Most of them received some um, clothes that were prepared for them, and from then on they were without any identification. At the beginning, they were uh, brought before the Ministry of Interior and there was some kind of some process that looks like a hearing but I read some of the protocols that were in these hearings it was a mockery. All they wanted to, know, to do is to bring those people into this line of uh, legal deportation. So me and other lawyers we suggested to them not to go through this process, not to give some any le legitimacy to this process, to sign under protest the fact that they want to leave the country, to keep saying that they were not coming to Israel, they were kidnapped in, into Israel. So they, are not, they cannot be deported from Israel as if they infiltrated into it illegally. They were not, of course not. So I believe that most of them did sign this uh, letter under protest and they preferred to go home. They could not seek any justice or any reasonable solution in the Israeli Ministry of Interior. This is very clear. Uh, on the paper we were very many lawyers because every lawyer of course wanted to be involved and wanted to take care. Once we really had to go to the arena or to go and do things we were many less. Uh, but just as well uh, there were all volunteers and everyone really wanted to do something to donate to this uh, mechanism and I believe most of us did. Not all of us could see, could see the prisoners, not all of the prisoners saw the lawyers, many of the people in the hospitals could not have a lawyer, but uh, I believe that uh, all the passengers can bring the story of the journey the best way in their own countries before free media. And some of the pleas to the Supreme Court today, some of the petitions demanded not to release them, but to put on trial those people. And the, the petitions of the right, extreme right wing in Israel said, we are going to be sentenced as war criminals for this event. And therefore we should not release the people, we should keep them, extract confessions from them that they were attacking the soldiers so that you can use these confessions in the future before the International Criminal Court and before Hague.